Welcome. I feel like you've been chasing summer for the last few months. I know, I have, I have. Like the most extended, amazing holiday ever. I have. I try and do it because it's miserable in the UK <laughs> in January. It's hard. Where have you been? What have you been doing? I went to Thailand for a few weeks and then came to Sydney to see Trent and my my family here. Is Thailand where the epic bikini, I was going to buy you yes. an Aussie bikini because I thought maybe you yes. need an Australian one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I took my little bikini bottoms out for a little <laughs> test run. <laughs> Didn't that excite the world? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, mad. And how long have you been in South Australia? Have you been here before? No, I've only been here for like three days now. Um, and I've been here before once on tour. and um, But I've never seen the rest, like I've never driven out the city. It's wild. Oh, it's like it's Italy. It's so beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's like Italy, do you reckon? Yeah, it feels like, it feels like Italy or it feels like um, California, like Napa. Like the, the wineries in yeah, there. Yeah. Where have you been going? Which um, regions? I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been driven places. <laughs> and plopped and in a new... I went to this amazing beach yesterday, went to wineries. It's insane. It's beautiful. It was a beautiful. This is where I was born. It's a great city. Yeah, it's amazing. It's gorgeous. Yeah. And you're, you're performing tonight, obviously, at The yeah. Cube. Yes. Have yes. you been out there to check it I out? I went there. Wild building. I've not seen wild. it. It's very wild. Yeah, right. Yeah, so that's going to be a gorgeous gig. First gig to kick off the year. Yeah, nice. great. How um, are you feeling about being back out in the world and touring again and stuff? I it's feel been... good. I feel good. There's moments where I'm like, you know, sometimes I think during COVID I had such a break and I got on top of my anxiety and all this stuff. And then it, when it gets busy again... There's definitely moments where I feel a bit breathless, like, oh my gosh, like, yeah. there's, you know, but I feel way more um, in control of myself nowadays, which is good. I feel calmer and happier and a bit more balanced. Yeah, well, because I was thinking that I've interviewed you over different stages in your career mm. so far. What's, who's the Sam that I'm interviewing today? How would oh you describe gosh. where you're oh at? Still, uh, still a hot mess <laughs> um, in many ways, um, but I'm, um, I've definitely, ha- having more stints of happiness great yeah i feel more joyful i'm more in control i'm growing up a bit you know and i love getting older it's it's something that i've always been excited for so i'm enjoying that is it that you feel more comfortable with who you are or yeah that for sure but also i'm just caring less what people think which is really nice feeling because in my early 20s i was (laughs) crippled with like paranoia of, of, of of how i was coming across you know? Well, I was thinking about when I first saw you perform, which I guess would have been your early 20s. Mm. It was at Rod Laver in Melbourne. Yeah. And the Sam on stage then, and then I was, you know, looking at the unholy film clip and yeah. I was like, yeah. is that the same Sam who can just express themselves the way they want now? Mm. Or have you, do you think, grown into the Sam that it's you are? It's 100% in the-, the same Sam. I'm, I think that um, just like everyone, right, how you dance in a club or how you dance with your friends in private places and how you move your body doing that in front of 20,000 people yeah. on stage is really <laughs> tough and as much as I I love performing I wouldn't say I'm like a natural entertainer I think I'm a natural singer a natural artist a natural songwriter but when it comes to entertaining I've really had to learn that you know I, I loved musical theater as a kid and that was a whole different art form it's hiding behind a character being myself on stage was incredibly vulnerable and scary. So I think naturally, I, as I've got older, I've got more used to being myself on stage. And, and with that becomes comes me introducing more parts of my personality personality to people as the you years go on. your tour, which yeah. is epic and amazing. What kind of show will you will you bring? It's going to be wild. It's going to be like nothing I've ever done before. I'm going to be dancing. I'm going to be wearing fabulous outfits. I'm just going to be... My aim is to really come off stage every night and be smiling and having fun. You know, my last tour was touring a record that was very intense and deep and it was beautiful and vulnerable. Yeah, but we'd but sob listening to it because yeah, it was so yeah. beautiful. And it was a heavy show. It was quite heavy. And this show, I, I want everyone leaving feeling happy and excited to go out and live their lives. So when are you touring and where are you going here in Australia? We're going, we start here in Adelaide yeah. and then we travel all around. Amazing. And we're doing, it's at the end of the year. And like by that time, summer we've again, done a lot you've of the done world. that well. Oh, yes. you've done the whole world before then? Yes, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it starts in April. Where do you get most excited to go to? Where do you have the Honestly, most fun? Australia and New Zealand is, is it's my, some of my favourite shows. I'm really excited to be in Tokyo again. I had the most amazing time in Tokyo last time. So I'm really excited to experience that and, and South Korea, places like that, which is just incredible uh, yeah, to visit. A very different world. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah but i'm i'm i love i love i love my job as much as it's tiring i i do love it and i'm and it's getting easier every time i do it well you're like a, an honorary aussie did you get did Thank i see you. on your insta that you got a kangaroo port hat i did that's so cool it's all crusty now it's gross why will that stop being that's crusty? healing yeah it's healing why did you choose that one I just Googled Australian flowers <laughs> and saw that and I was like, that's cute. It uh, is cute. <laughs> but because I, I love, I do love it here and I have family and friends here. So we, I was with, with my friends um, on holiday and we all just decided to get tattoos. Did you get matching ones? No, we all got different ones. Different wildlife or like completely different? Um, someone got a platypus <laughs> and then someone got a full moon. Yeah, right. Yeah. You could have got the full moon too. I know, I know, I know. But I love the kangaroo paw. Yeah, kangaroo yeah, paw is beautiful. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, let's talk Gloria. Yeah. Tell me, what's the, what are the themes in Gloria? I've had a listen to it. It's absolutely magical. Thank you. It's a really interesting ride. Like, I feel like it goes yeah. dips in and out of all these different genres and moods. Yeah. What were you hoping to do with it? I think that I wanted to really lean into what I've wanted to do in all my albums. You know, I feel like my music, I've, I, I study pop music and I love pop albums. And like so many of those, you know, even Rihanna, I'd say, is my ultimate artist that I've always loved. And I loved her records growing up because they were really this this melting pot of genres and um, I of, of pop genres and pop music. And I think I I wanted to create like a patchwork of, of all my favorite divas and inspirations in this record. I also really wanted an album that just felt strong yeah. every, all the way through. Every statement was clear. Every song, I wanted it to be a bit of a slap in the face. Yeah, it really is. And it, and it does feel like this is, I do feel like this album is, and the, it, it's the beginning and the end of something because I do think that it's the beginning of me expressing myself in the way that I want to do it fully um, and unashamedly. But it's also the end, I think, of this type of writing for me. Oh. Um, I think that I always there'll always be pop sensibility to the music I make, but I've really loved the process of making a body of work that you can listen to from start to finish. So I'm going to be delving into that more and more with my music. Well, I did feel that when I was listening to it because the last album I've been playing on repeat from start to finish was Harry's album. Mm, yes. And again, it's the sort of one, like, there's nothing better. Like, it's been a long time, I feel like, yeah. since I've listened to albums where you just sit down and go on a full ride rather totally. than just turn on the radio and hear one and then, you know, that's it. Totally, because it's... And I like... I'm, what I'm excited about that is that I can take people on some crazy rides. Yeah. I, I'm addicted to making people feel uncomfortable. <laughs> it's like my favourite thing now. Well, like, there was a lot of God <laughs> themes in there. It was mm -hmm. a, is it an F you to God? Or is it oh, a no? No. no, I mean, oh, sorry, is that no, blasphemous? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm, I'm not religious. I'm a spiritual person. Um, and the, I think that I grew up in, uh, I went to Catholic school yeah. um, until I was 18. Um, so when it comes to explaining big feelings and big emotions mm. in life, I do go to some of these words. I always have. I think even if you go back to Stay With Me and the thrill of all and stuff like that, there's always been an element of choir and um, I guess an element of prayer within my music. Yeah. You know, it's where I go to when I write. But I think this album for sure is dealing with faith. Um, not religion, faith. And for me, I lost a bit of faith in my life on my third record and going through a transition that I went through in my life. I've, I lost a bit of faith in everything. And, and this album, I, I reclaimed that a bit and I have faith that things are going to be okay. And um, I put my energy into that now. And and so, yeah, that that's what the those words Yeah, the unholy are, are and towards. the... Yeah, right. Because yeah. I, I was reading that you were saying this album is kind of like the album you needed as a kid, the body of yeah. art, like the armour that you would put on when you left the house. Yeah, totally. And that's what the, the hymn Gloria is, a hymn that I wrote for my younger self. That's like a lullaby. So, yeah. And then you've got Unholy, which is just epic and sexual and just dark. Yeah. And which is again is what I need as a little kid. <laughs> 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 Who's it about? Unholy, this is the thing, right? I could sit here and just I'd give it all up of who this song's about. And every song I ever write is about a real situation, is a it? real life, yeah. a real person. Yeah, everything, you know, it's all um, a diary. Um, but with Unholy, I, I feel like it says enough. And but I, is it a particular person or a type of, like, is it someone you know or is it a type person, of, yeah. yeah, right. But it's a particular person that inspired a commentary on a yes. specific situation, Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, it's really about being part of a secret that you don't want to be a part yeah. of, which I think a lot of 
women, queer people, every, everyone actually can can relate to, you know, mm. hearing these things and being like, I don't, I wish I didn't know that. Yes, <laughs> yeah. You know, how I was working with Kim, I was fascinating, fascinated to see you were talking about how you wanted more women involved mm-hmm. in this album and, and even when you were recording how, you know, sitting yeah. in front of a bunch of men, you're like, oi, all of you shut up and let her do her thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, it was it was really amazing moment in the studio with Kim actually, like we had so much fun and initially there was this pressure in the room and me and Kim really fought against it and it made the song what it was. But Kim, why, what did they want that they weren't? I think they just they just wanted it to sound a certain way and there was a lack of um, sass yeah. <laughs> in the room and um, a lack of humour. Yeah. And I think that is something that queer people... Um, do so well yeah you know is take things and and subjects um and memories and th- things that are quite painful and we can give a, a sassiness and a light-heartedness to it that can make it easier to digest and i think that me and, only me and kim really knew how to do that so we went you know we took charge oh because it's epic like it is yeah. i reckon it is one of like the top three songs of this year like oh, it is you. an absolute banger thank and you. almost every time you listen to it you see it on different levels like at first it's just a, you know the pop song that and it hits you in the face because it's so different yeah. to what you've done yeah. and then the more you listen to it, it you know you see the darkness and oh, the, thank yeah you. i'm really addicted good. to it i mean yeah. like i've i've never i've never been a part of a song like that in my life like when it started, it was only me and one person who actually believed in it. Everyone else didn't like it. Everyone thought it was awful. And oh. the, the now did you show them the top hits and go? I mean, yeah, <laughs> it was a weird. It's a crazy moment because it really just shows how, for me, music is the leader. And when the music is calling to me and saying, "This is amazing. This is good. This feels amazing," you have to follow that and you have to follow your gut. So how, having more women involved in the album, how did that change how you write and how you are in studio and stuff? I think it really helped me with my lyrics and writing lyrics. You know, I'm, when, when it comes to the writing of music, I'm involved in every aspect, production, um, you know, lyrics, melody, everything. But I, I'm he- more heavy on the melody than anything. And the lyrics I, I actually find myself in, in when I'm in the studio, I'll just sit there and fire off how I feel and talk about how I feel and then we take that and we try and turn it into a song and um, for me having the presence of Jesse Reyes and people like that in the room with me they made me feel safe to talk about sex yeah which I haven't really felt safe to do in my past records so it was really beautiful to be able to express that part of my life and and also writing in different places because i was i saw yeah. that you did that was that in jamaica i that mean that must jamaica. have just brought out a whole like yeah wild it was insane the, the jamaican trip was just beautiful and um i didn't leave the studio really it was just very focused um and i'm gonna do that again in terms of just going away with the intention to just write music yeah um for two three weeks i love it it's I've always been someone who never like worked nights or like was in the studio at night time. Like Dolly and, Parton, yeah. just nine to five. It and... was <laughs> nine to five. And, but now I'm loving, you know, just dedicating a few weeks and, you know, the time disappears. Amazing. Well, the album's incredible. So excited to see you tonight and to see you back in Australia. You know how much I love you. I love you too. Lovely it's to see you It's always such a joy well. to talk to you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs>